Like DMXing inside a Slink. First off, if your device that you're trying to DMX it doesn't have a CRMX chip built in, or you don't have a Timo chip hooked up somehow, then you're not gonna be able to use Sidus Link to the full ability. You'll still be able to use it through Bluetooth, but you need to be able to use it through CRMX to get access to the Q options and to be able to put them in individual DMX channels. So first off, you're going to need an iPad or an Android device, that's whatever the uh, Android equivalent is, to run uh, Sidus Link Pro. So it is a free program. I was mistaken on another video. We have to pay for it. I think there is an upgrade, but it seems like you get all the features in the free program. So I, I don't know. Now I'm gonna show you two different lights. One of them has a Bluetooth and CRMX built in, which is the Vortex back here. And the other one is the uh, Amaran F22 panel, which only has Bluetooth. Now I have the, the brain here and it does have a DMX built, it's hard to see, but there's a little uh, USB-C port where you would plug in your Timo chip or whatever kind of CRMX device you wanted to control it with this. But if you don't have the DMX or I mean the CRMX built in, you can't use these other effects I'm going to show you. All right, I'm going to go ahead and open up Sidus Link here. You do need an account for their, uh, to operate this app. Uh, it is free though, so go ahead and make one if you don't have one. I'm going to open up my projects I have. I got a bunch of projects, but I'm going to start fresh. I'm going to create a new one. I'm going to go ahead and open that. And right, so first thing I want to do is make sure my Wi-Fi is working. It's up in the top here. You just click this little Wi-Fi. I'm going to allow my location. You have to have lo your location on. And there's my uh, Aurora Wi-Fi box. And I'm connected to it, so that's all good there. Here you can also see um, wireless transmitters. Usually these are aperture-based, like the Sidus One. You have your Sidus Bluetooth, and then your CRMX Bluetooth. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect my Aurora to this now while I'm here. I'm just gonna tap on it. Now it's connected. I also have my CSV-8 on here, which is my Vortex. That's what it's named. Uh, I can also use that through CRMX without using the box because it has built-in CRMX, but I'm gonna go through the box instead um, just to have everything going through that. Now I'm gonna exit here. I wanna add the fixtures now. I'm gonna click on the top right and click Add New Fixture. It's gonna search for them. Nothing popped up here. Looks like I need to Bluetooth reset my F22. Sometimes it needs to do that to pick it up if uh, it's a new unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And there it is, it popped up there. I'm gonna select it and then save it up here. And it's gonna load it up. And then I'm gonna hit okay. All right, and there it is. Um, now I have it in there. I'm gonna test it here, turn it on. And you can see it's turning on and I can see everything. So I gotta do this in a black space so the screen doesn't reflect. I wanna go ahead and add my Vortex. Now the thing is, I wanna add the Vortex to the DMX channels, which are up here. So I can have it on a universe. If you have a unit like the F22, which only has Bluetooth built in and not CRMX, you're not gonna be able to put it on the channels. If you have CRMX built in, it will allow you to use the channels for the universes and also it's gonna allow you to do these, um, these Q sequences down here. So if I wanna add my Vortex, I'm gonna do it manually. I'm gonna add a new fixture. I'm gonna hit the manual setup here and then select a profile. It did have the profile already on here as part of the app. You might have to download your profile onto here to, to have one that works, but they happen to have mine. It's a Vortex and I'm on channel mode 16. I'm gonna save that. And I'm going to start it on channel 1 up to channel 16. That's what I have it on right now on my unit starting on address 1. Set that up. I'm going to hit next. And now it's in there. Now I can turn that one on. And that one's working too. So now if I wanted to go ahead and create a sequence here, a Q sequence, I could do that with the vortex, but I couldn't with the amaranth. So I want to go from daylight to, or I want to go from tungsten to daylight on just a fade through two different cues here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select my vortex. I'm gonna take the amaran out. I'm gonna turn that up to somewhat decent amount there. I'm gonna put it on CCT, and then I'm gonna hit record. I'm gonna go into Q1. I'll make it gold because it's uh, uh, warm. Now it's saved, or I saved it in number two, but whatever one you have selected is where it's gonna save. I'm gonna go to the second one after that and change this up here to really warm or really cool blue. I'm gonna save that, we'll call it Q2, and then make it blue, and I'll put a two second fade in between. So there we go, now I'm gonna turn this off, 
clear it and then go ahead and hit my go down here. There's my tungsten. If I hit go on the other one, it does a two second fade to blue. And I can go back and hit that again, go back to the warm, go back to that. And you can see it's holding as well for the fade time down there. Now if I wanted to stop this, I would have to click and hold up top and then hit unload and then do the same thing for this one. Click on it, unload. And that's how you unload them so then they're ready to go again. Now if I want to add on to this, let's say I wanted to add a, a red in between. I can add cues inside of the cues as a stack. So if I go to edit cut sequence here, you can see my cues. I can add multiple cues inside of each one and change the fade time and I can also click and just hold to rearrange the order. So let me just add a, I'm gonna go back to my vortex, click on that. I'm gonna go to HSI and make it a red and then turn that up to like half, half percent or half intensity. I'm gonna record that and then here's where it's important. There's three different options. You can create a new queue at the end of the queue, which I wanna do, or you could override the current queue or merge the queue, which merging is more like if you wanna update what you already have in there, you would just use that function. Then you override, just takes it all away, puts the new one in and whatnot. So I'm just gonna add this to the end of it. Now if I go back into the edit sequence here, I can see I got a second queue, which is my red. Now I could come in and click and hold and rearrange these as so, like that. I'm gonna go back and leave it the way it was. Sometimes it's a little touchy. And I'm gonna add a fade in here of like two seconds as well in between each one. So now if I go ahead and clear this out, so now my light's gonna turn off because I have nothing in the stage area now. You gotta have everything cleared up here for this to work properly. And if you did have something on down here and you went up and changed, put the light back on and changed it, this is gonna have priority over anything down here. So if this was red in your queue and you had it queued up red and you went in and put this on and it's on CCT, it's gonna go immediately to CCT because whatever's up here on the stage has priority. So always make sure to clear that when you're doing anything down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit go. Now it was hard to see, but it went from tungsten to red. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this again, and I'm gonna make this fade in like five seconds to fade up to that um, tungsten. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hold it now and just um, unload that. Now it's unloaded. I'm gonna go ahead and hit go. Now fading up to gold and then red. It, it kind of mix, mix matches them a little bit. Now if I go to my blue and I hit that, now I'm fading back to blue. You can go back and forth between these and it will hold on what you do because there's two cues in this specific one. It's gonna hold first on the tungsten and then once I hit it again, it's gonna go to red. So if I hit it once, we're fading up or fading to tungsten. There it is. That's the full tungsten. Now it's holding until I cue it again for the red. So if I hit it again, it's gonna fade over to red. There it goes. Now you can also have your sliders here. So I could adjust this intensity on the fly down there if I wanted to, just by hitting the M slider sidebar over here. There's three different ones. You got M status and M actions. So you can have those up or down if you want, depending on how you want to work. That's the basic cues. You can create a whole bunch. Pretty cool little feature. So if I want to create a group out of these two and move these simultaneously, I would go here, select them both, go to add fixed or add new group, select the two lights, name it, name it what I want, hit confirm. And then there's my group. And I have over here that you got groups and you got fixtures. So if I select all, or if I select group one, it's gonna bring up both of those lights and they're both playing now. It doesn't show you the actual units, but that's my group. Now I can just deselect that and then just go into individual fixtures as well, or have them both together. And if I click on group here, with the fixtures individually selected, you can see that they're both moving with it. And you can see that it says on my Amaran, Citus Bluetooth, real small and green, it might be hard to see. My Vortex does not. My Vortex is running on CRMX. 
So final thoughts on the app. It's a fine app, it's all right. For free, it's really actually pretty good. It's better than the regular Citus Link, which kind of really sucks. The Citus Link Pro is a lot better. When you exit out of the program and go back in, the light is usually almost always still connected with the old app. You would have to click on it and it would take a second to reconnect, which was really a pain. I would recommend Blackout, which is a paid version. It's about $600 for the basic one and up to $1,750 for the full universes. It's just a lot more in-depth program and you can do a lot more, but it is paid, so maybe you're not to that point yet. And Citus Link Pro is a great alternative to get to that point. If you guys liked the video, please like and subscribe. It helps me out. I'm gonna be coming out with some other videos on this. I'll see you next week.